So at saturation, we know that my VDS is equal to VDSat, which is equal to VGS minus VT. So the total charge would be nothing but substituting this value of VDS in this equation at y equal to L, which will give me minus COX into zero, which is nothing but equal to zero. So my total charge at the drain end becomes zero. It's not exactly equal to zero, but as an approximation, we can see that the total charge at length L is approximately equal to zero and my channel is pinched off. So that's where we get the shape of our channel as something like this, which we have already understood. Now, if we keep on increasing my VDS beyond VDS sat, what's going to happen? So let's keep on increasing my VDS beyond VD sat. We know that my channel will keep on shifting towards the left or the pinch off point will keep on shifting towards the left. Correct? Now, the voltage of the channel when the pinch off took place and when it's shifting towards the left, it's not going to change. So let's say now my channel has moved towards the left and it's moved to a new point now. This is my new point where the channel is present up to, which I'm calling it as L dash. And my actual channel was L. So there is a difference of delta L between L and L dash, which will come to very shortly. But when the pinch off took place, the voltage at this point was nothing but VD sat. Does everyone agree? Because this is nothing but the drain voltage and the drain voltage at which pinch off took place was nothing but VD sat. And even if the channel pinches off and moves towards the left, the voltage here will still remain to be equal to VD sat. Let's quickly go ahead and do that. So voltage at y equal to L dash is nothing but VD sat. Now, here comes a very interesting thing for us to understand that when the pinch off point moves from the drain end of the channel towards the source, with the increasing drain to source voltage, what we find out is the remaining part of the channel between the pinch off point and the drain will be completely in the depletion mode. Now, what is this? Let's understand. See, initially the channel was present completely. Now the channel pinches off and is up till here. So this here, there is still a channel, but the part present here is depleted or depletion region is formed because there is no charge. There is no channel present. We just saw Q1 equal to zero there. Correct? There's no channel present. And we also saw the voltage of the channel here is nothing but VD sat. Now the interesting thing, what needs to be understood is the electrons can still flow from source to the channel. But how does the current flow? Because here the channel is broken off and we have already discussed that the current will flow only when the channel is present. So how does the electrons move in this direction? The electrons move in this direction due to the presence of the electric field, which is generated. And this electric field is nothing but lateral electric field. So now going back here, now here is where you should be interested in what's happening to ID due to channel and modulation. Let's quickly understand my channel has reduced now. So let's write the equation of the channel mu n cox by 2 w by L dash. It's not going to be L now by L dash VGS minus VTO the whole square. Now we already know that from the diagram L dash is equal to L minus delta L because this is my L dash. This is my L and this difference is delta L. So L dash is equal to total L minus delta L, which will give me L dash. Correct. So I can just put this in the equation back and rearrange the terms. So that will give me ID sat equal to see what I'm doing here is I am trying to get my equation in terms of L mu n C O X by two W by L VGS minus VT over the whole square. In order to do this, I have to do some mathematics, which is very simple, but nothing but one upon one minus delta L by L. So I have substituted L dash as L minus delta L. Then I have made the rearranging of terms and I have got this as my value. Now, this is nothing but our equation of the current in saturation region with an additional term, which is present here. So we need to investigate this term a bit more detail. So we can easily show this and it can be proved that shortening of the channel delta L is actually proportional to square root of VDS minus VDS sat. This can be easily proved. Currently it's beyond the scope, so we are not going into that. 
Now we'll use an empirical relation between delta L and drain to source voltage. So that's nothing but 1 minus delta L by L is equal to or approximately equal to 1 minus lambda VDS. This again, we are not going into the details. We are just simplifying our analysis and following an empirical relation where lambda is nothing but channel length modulation coefficient. Remember that. And if we assume that lambda VDS is far, far, far less than 1, then I can easily write the equation of my current in saturation region as nothing but ID sat equal to mu n COX by 2 W by L VGS minus VT the whole square because it's very less I can take it up and multiply 1 plus lambda VDS this shows that due to channel length modulation my current increases by a parameter of 1 plus lambda VDS which is nothing but shown in the graph here so this was my constant current constant current constant current when lambda was equal to 0 or when we neglected channel and modulation but due to channel and modulation if you see my current has increased and this is nothing but channel and modulation i hope you have followed stay tuned for further clips and thank you very much